This is Anime Archaeology Station, broadcasting anime analysis to anyone who will listen. We have a basement archive full of an ever-growing collection of anime media. We tell you about it and explain the terms and tropes behind this unique medium. Thanks for joining us. Hello everyone, welcome to the broadcast. Hope you're doing well out there. We're going to get into Double Zeta Gundam in this episode. Really looking forward to that. And we're actually going to start with something a little different. I decided I would give you some context into how the show was made and some of the stuff that happened in the creation of Double Zeta Gundam that I think gives some good context. No spoilers, no plot things, um, but just some things to, to be aware of that I think again, will help you appreciate the show a little bit more. But I want to do that down in the research room. So um, join me uh, down there. Let's go. All right, welcome to the research room where we go behind the scenes of an anime that we're about to watch. And in this case, that is Double Zeta Gundam. So we're going to give you some context into what was going on when this show was being made. Now, Double Zeta is a direct sequel to original uh, Zeta Gundam, which was a sequel to original Mobile Suit Gundam. And that's, like, pretty intense. Like, it is a direct sequel. The first episode of Double Zeta takes place hours, apparently, after the end of Zeta Gundam, which is, again, quite unusual for anime of the time and even anime today to have a sequel just start right after the events of the previous one, really dealing with some of the, the the outcome of the end of Zeta Gundam. One of the reasons they could do that is that Gundam was doing very well as a franchise. Uh, it was very successful. Uh, Zeta had been a, uh, a big, a very popular show, the, the return of this beloved franchise. And so Double Zeta came out like the year after Zeta Gundam. So it almost felt like there was just going to be a new Gundam series every year, which gives Double Zeta Gundam its own unique feel. Uh, so just watch out for that. Now, another important aspect of Double Zeta is that Yoshiyuki Tomino, the creator and one of the writers, felt that Mecha had gotten really dark at that point. Now, he was partly responsible for that, but he felt it had gotten a little too dark. So he decided to lighten the tone of Double Zeta Gundam somewhat. And this was really polarizing for the fandom, particularly given the very dark ending of Zeta Gundam. Now you think back, Mobile Suit Gundam is quite dark. There are other anime around that period that had dark endings and other dark things, but Double, uh, I'm sorry, Mobile Suit had a pretty dark tone all throughout. There's some lightness and so forth, but it's a serious show. Zeta got progressively darker as that show continued, and then Double Zeta's tone felt like whiplash to fans at the time. Now, I think with the benefit of hindsight, it's not as bad as people have made it out to be. It is definitely uh, lighter in tone, but I don't think it's suddenly a screwball comedy. So if you've heard that about Double Zeta, go into it with an open mind. Uh, I don't think you'll find that it's um, uh, jarringly different. It's a little different, definitely, but uh, I think it works. Another thing to be aware of with Double Zeta is <clears throat> how when they were working on it, they actually got the green light to make a film, which ended up being Shara's Counterattack. And when Tomino discovered that, he ended up pulling out some plot he had planned to put into Double Zeta and saving that for Shara's counterattack. And instead, he reworked some of the plot of Double Zeta. And in fact, one of the characters is kind of a stand-in for an existing character. Uh, you'll know who it is when you see him. Um, as a result, the plot of Double Zeta can feel a little awkward at times. Uh, if you're looking for it, you can tell where something got replaced, where a plot is going one direction and doesn't quite go where you'd expect. I don't think it's bad. I don't think it's dramatically noticeable in the sense that it makes the show feel um, poorly written. 
but you will notice a little bit of awkwardness in some of the plotting as it goes along. Um, and you'll also, it's also worth noting that in Zeta Gundam, some characters from original Gundam do show up. Uh, you'd expect that in Double Zeta, not as many people show up as you might expect. Some of them got saved for Shara's counterattack. So, again, a thing just to be aware of, but I don't think it's going to destroy your enjoyment of the show. Just FYI. So, that is behind the scenes of Double Zeta. Hope you found that useful. All right, uh, I've just gotten a notification. Steve's got some alerts going on up where he is. So, we'll get to Double Zeta in a little bit. There's been a uh, Red Bear attack uh, in his area, so they're dealing with that up there. You know how red bears are very dangerous, so um, we'll give him a minute to deal with that. But first, a few things to watch out for when we do watch that first episode of Double Zeta Gundam. Look at how the series sets its tone, particularly compared to Mobile Suit Gundam and Zeta Gundam. It is establishing what it is trying to be in that first episode, so worth noticing that. Also note how Judo, our new hero, acts differently from Amuro or Camille. Some interesting contrast there. Also note how his backstory really informs that. Judo has a pretty different um, uh, background and setup than some other mecha heroes you may be aware of. Also notice the use of music in this episode. You'll, you'll recognize some of the music, potentially. And then also notice how Tomino introduces some plot points that seem a little odd. It's not quite clear what's going on, but then they're explained later in the episode. You have to be paying attention in a Tomino series. So uh, I'm going to go and grab Steve. I'm actually going to jump right into it because with that alert going on, we need to get right into Double Zeta and uh, hope nothing bad happens there. So uh, let's jump into Steve. So, interesting. Apparently it's not an anime. Not, are we are we sure about that? I mean, <laughs> not an anime. I, it it kind of looks like one, and doesn't it? I mean, we I see Japan. So. We see it's animated. Seems I, like I it. Guess. <clears throat> Is I it guess, a documentary? I guess Tomino has strong feelings <laughs> about what he's making. As he's here. want to do. He's want to do. All right. That's interesting. Yeah. So it starts with a skull flying through space, which then evolves into kind of a proto person which is not how that hominid. works hominid yeah hominid <laughs> then evolves into a early man uh, which then which, with, 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 the, with the lyrics of you watch too much television but somehow right. I, I doubt that <laughs> which then becomes Amaro oh Am Amaro okay oh new type okay got it yeah I guess which then Camille. becomes Camille <laughs> it's a boy's name ah which then becomes our protagonist, presumably. Oh, this guy. Ah. Right. So, evolution of man into what we have now, I guess? Yeah, that sounds like it, yeah. yeah. All right. Hmm. But it's not anime. But it's not anime, no. 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 Clearly not anime. Not, anime. No. not at all. Now, this is kind of interesting because you get this transition from a human hand to a mechanical hand. I'm assuming implying that the next stage of evolution is mechanical, technological. That yes, you now have to deal with technology. What does that do to humanity? And I love Double, Double Zeta Gundam, but the fact that Char turns to us and seems to just yawn uh, yeah. doesn't really get across. It's it's just a little awkward. I and again, I, I understand that it's you know calling out to us from beyond the stars, but just a little weird. But it just looks like, like, <clears throat> it literally looks like a stay off my lawn type of <laughs> it does. Taste, honestly. Well, you wanted your monolith. <laughs> there it is. It's full of stars. And circuit oh, no. boards, apparently. Wow. Huge honking circuit board. All right. Yeah. Which I suppose is meant to be about technology and it's place in the future yeah fascinating though all right so i do like the fact that we are rotating the the colony interesting yes. though are those yeah. ones they are ones that's we did not see that before no we didn't we don't see i think that's the first i don't i don't i don't recall seeing anything like that 
So is this the actual first ever colony? Yeah. yeah. This must be side one. Interesting. Side one. I also wonder like how much of that is speaking to existing fans. Because if you're coming in this not knowing Gundam, a one on the side of a space colony, what does that mean? But we right. know. Hmm. I also do like the pacing here where we start with these shots of space and just this music playing, which is actually music from original Zeta Gundam, which is interesting. Um, mm. It's not all new music, but just establishing this, that we're in space, things are going slowly. We can, we can let the scene breathe a bit. All right, and here's our first shot of our main character. And it's interesting to notice, like, what do we see? He's in some kind of, is it even a mobile suit? I mean, technically, it's, it's not, not, not even a war, certainly. Yeah, I, I mean, no. And the thing is kind of interesting that we're starting off with a non-military thing, and we're doing yeah. a very non-military thing. And this is like uh, kind of almost like Pat Labor-ish. Like, here's your, here's your utility vehicle to, to do this. Now, in the other series, we've been seeing, like, there has been, it's military. It's a war machine. It's this. It's that. We're not getting that at all here. There's no firing, nothing going on. So we know he's doing work, I guess. Yeah, exactly. Which is certainly not the sort of privileged position we've seen from our other pilots before. Hmm. Right. Also notice the first thing that he does is he has this little, ah, and has to adjust. So implying some vulnerability, some lack of tremendous skill kind of humanizes the, the main character a bit. Right. Um, again, contrast, you know, how we started off with Camille, right? He's running, he's doing his stuff, he's getting his butt kicked by some random judo guy. Um, but there's not this, <laughs> this that, that, not the same sense of normality. Even to this point, he's panting. He's tired. Yeah. <clears throat> this is work. Yeah. yeah. What a great shot. Not only do you have what appears yeah. to be a Zaku or something similar in the foreground, uh, and I'm sure some Gundam fan could tell me exactly what mecha that is, we see the Argama behind it uh, from, yeah. from Zeta and that, that sense of, oh, wow, we really are connected right back to Zeta Gundam. That's a, it's a really cool thing. And here we go. We cut inside. We get bright. Yeah. And we... Get a sense that, okay, we know exactly where we are plot-wise. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, right after what happened uh, at the end of Zeta, so fair enough. Wow. And not only is he comatose, effectively, Fa's trying to force the water into his mouth, and we see the water droplets come out. He's not even swallowing. He is burnt. Done. Yep. All right, so... Immediate shift in tone here. Um, yep. Not, 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 not completely out of place because we have the kids show up a little bit, which breaks the ice a bit. But music becomes a lot more upbeat, and it becomes much more mundane about just kind of their everyday job here. Yeah, it's like the like local yokel music. It's just like, uh, hey, buddy, we're we're gonna repair the. Uh, the the lawnmower here so let's uh <laughs> let's get it in there yeah it, it does it definitely has that vibe of you know this is what we do this is how we're doing it we're not you know <clears throat> you get the sense that they were not in battle right? right so we're getting a totally different viewpoint of people you know beforehand we're seeing we're seeing battle 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 people connected to our project blah 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 these are just guys going hey i can get we can get some money scavenging out here look i look i found something here you go yep exactly <clears throat> so yeah in fact, to that point, look at the uh, stances of these characters, right? Leaning over, mm -hmm. very relaxed. Um, even his friend is just looking around, but, but very chill in, in, the, in the work. I kind of love the um, Spider-Man move there. Yeah. <laughs> Hop down. He the... did. He just... <laughs> I love the drama of this moment where... We have an escape pod. We know there's someone inside. And so now the question is, of all the characters who survived Zeta Gundam, who might this be? Um, you know, is it a Titan? Is it not? Like, what would that mean for the story? Yeah. Who is it? Well, it's a Titan. Yeah. 
you know, because, you know, that's that's the first response of the Titan, which is, oh, I don't know you. Violence. That must be the answer. <laughs> yes. All right. Now we get to see some of the personality of our hero, presumably, where he when when he sees authority behaving poorly, he calls it out. Right. But he also doesn't like kick to the face <laughs> response. Yeah. He doesn't have Camille's automatic psychopathic response of just kill, kill, kill. You yeah, know, he's just like, hey, buddy, come on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, the glorious hair. <laughs> like, we know who this is. It's the glorious, wonderful anime hair gel. My goodness. Wow. Just wow. Just glorious. I just love how the poofs right out of the hell. It's just like, <laughs> there you go. Glorious. That is what. Uh, you, you know what? You know what he needs to be doing right now? Timo Day. <laughs> it's what three cans of Aquanet will do for you, you know. <laughs> All right, so we're establishing a few things here. Yeah. This this place is not doing well. It's economically depressed. I mean, you don't normally see this on the side, no, right? You don't. You said most of the colonies are kind of nice, pastoral, or you know, very well put together. This, this literally looks like a city. Yeah. Like earthbound city. Yeah. Um, uh, the slums, basically. Yeah. And we established that they don't know when their father's going to come back. Uh, main character is basically taking care of his little sister in some way. Um, and uh, so definitely responsibility there, which we mm-hmm. don't. You know, we have not. Amaro and Camille had no responsibility. That was a lot of what defined them. No. Um, yeah. Judo, a much more responsible, blue collar kind of a guy. They sure don't seem like they are under duress, do they? No. They're helping. And it, it's he's not holding a gun to them. He's eating food. He looks like he's got some clothes there. Yeah. And a change of clothes. And. Why are they helping him? What's, what's, yeah. what's, what did he promise? What, I mean, you know, aside from the initial, you know, Titan throat grab, you know, I don't know you, I'm going <laughs> to strangle you there for a second. Um, you know, suddenly everyone's a little bit chummy and they have a plan in action. Mm-hmm. So what is that? What, what's yeah. going on here? Because what we know from, from Zeta is that these guys are not good. No, no. not at all. Um, yeah, it's very interesting, and the fact that he, that Judo like brought him clothes. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. yeah, like went out of his way. Fascinating. I really like the dynamism of this shot, which doesn't come across as well in still image. But how you get the animation of the hair, but also they jigger the camera around to get that sense of almost like a handheld shot. It just really, yeah, it's really strong. So you think here, this is a man who has survived all of Zeta Gundam. Um, which is a feat in and of itself. And he's trying to get into the dock. He's a survivor. He's going to find a way. What's he going to do? Yeah. Well, because as a Titan, this is what you do. (laughs) I suppose that works. It's, it's one approach. Certainly. Yeah. Uh, oh, the choices we oh, make. The choices we make. <laughs> oh, good lord. He just dumps the driver. I mean, I mean, could you just pull over? I mean, you know. Oh, God. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, again, establishing Titans have not changed. <laughs> No. So the, that dynamic is still in play here in Double Zeta. Whew. Yeah, well, yes. <laughs> of course that was painful. <laughs> All right, so we hmm. see... Notice his priority. Exactly. Um, food. It's somewhat how comforting to, be, to come back to a spaceport, and it looks exactly like Episode 1 of Mobile Suit Gundam. Yeah. <laughs> God, yeah, it does. <laughs> it does. Exact same design because it would be like that's what that's what colonies look like. That's right. Yeah, it's what I was. Yeah. yeah. And again, right. Judo showing some compassion and some 
uh, response to authority there. Don't know if that's the wisest choice with this individual, but you know. <laughs> you might just be the experience of the Titan throat maneuver. <laughs> I love that. Of course. So remember, she that Fa looked in the rearview mirror. The kids weren't there, <clears throat> and there's that moment of, "Ha, huh, that's strange." No, they're hiding underneath. Because again, they're, they're kids who grew up on a capital ship in a Gundam series. They know to you know what to do in emergency situations. Right. All right. So we have a meeting between our protagonists. Mm. Okay. Let's see how this turns out. Oh, that's creepy. Oh. Oh. Yeah. The, the glance over. Wow. That's fascinating. That's, wow. So I guess they're basically saying, you know, Camille has some responses here. Um, maybe he's recovering. Who knows? All right. So we know that the new type connection is still here. Uh, Camille's new type powers are... Still very much active. Interesting. <laughs> Sorry, I I I How love. Do you the, eat an orange? Do you... <laughs> I I I'm assuming this is the joke. Is that he's like from Earth? Or he's from somewhere where they don't get a lot of oranges, so he just doesn't know how to eat an orange. <laughs> that is funny. Oh, uh -huh. there you go. So we're starting to deal with the consequences of war on everyday people. Cool. Well, that's interesting to know. Tax power and air bills. Air. Wow. Tax for air. Huh. Ah, nice uh, Nicely detail done, yes. that as they're escalating up, they're getting closer to the center of the colony, so the, uh, the gravity is, is disappearing, so now things are floating. Neat. And there's the Argama... Post end wow. of Zeta, uh, it's seen better days. Yeah, it's beaten. It looks a little beaten up. A little beat up. Not quite like uh, Star Trek Voyager. No. <laughs> Let us call out how far Bright has come. Yes. That a young child can climb on his shoulder and he's just like, eh, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Well, maybe he knows that this one isn't going to, like, beat the crap out of yeah, the Titans. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It, it is worth calling out how farcical this is. Worst hostage uh, <laughs> taking ever. Yeah, exactly. I particularly appreciate Fa's expression here, where she's like, it's like come really? on. <laughs> I just went through a space battle. I'm dealing with this crap, and I have to really. I have to deal with you, really, the three amigos. Okay, mm -hmm. great. Pretty much, um, it is. It is kind of hilarious. Um, uh, but yeah, it's it's. So, to that point, we get a we're getting a shift in tone here, saying this is a serious thing, right? I, I don't think they're undercutting the fact that we have they have a hostage. Uh, Yazan's trying to get out. Um, but we can have fun with it. We can, in, you know, right. add some comedy. Oh, God. <laughs> because that's, Gundam. Because Gundam, and that's always a solution. Oh, God. Yeah. Okay. Let's see how this the turns out. going to take that kid's shoulder right off. <laughs> ah. ah. And there was our motivation. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Want to get your money, so that's what he promised them. Fair enough. I can understand. All right, so mm. I have to ask a couple of things. First off, did Camille deliberately reach out to Judo in that moment because he sensed some new type powers in him? And then in this moment, is Camille like deliberately calling out to Judo to stop him from using the gun? Yeah. I don't, I don't know that there is an answer to that, but that it is what that right. seems to be a possibility. They're being assaulted with oranges, number one. Dude's just flying in with a you know, utility mecha, whatever. You have the 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 three amazing non-hostage-taker-tree guys <laughs> in, in action here. 
and dock workers just standing around just going, I, I don't care that there's a hostage, I'm eating my orange. <laughs> Slight tonal shift. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> well, you were right. Huh. <laughs> the, the recoil just threw them right back. And I'm getting idiot vibes here. Mm, mm, let's. I, I hope not. <laughs> I really hope not. Oh, they do get a hit in. In fairness, not yeah. bad. Okay. Now. Why do we always make these choices? <laughs> That's exactly what I was going to point out. Like, definitely true to form for a Gundam show. We got to just yes. jump into any Gundam we happen to see. Uh, I will say again. Uh, every Gundam series does manage to motivate it somehow where now Judo is like, ah, prize. Yes. Like, this is a thing I can make money off of or some, somehow do something with. Um, I, I can see it. Oh, God, Bright. So <laughs> Bright. I'm so sorry for Bright. Oh, poor Bright. <laughs> he just got to take a break. You know, there's a back of his head is you know in the back of his the voice is just like another one another <laughs> freaking one of these oh uh -huh. Herbs. <laughs> <laughs> please bright please do it <laughs> uh i also appreciate that his his question isn't why aren't you trying to steal a mobile suit it's like why try to, to seal one that barely works? Like, almost like, I know you're going to do this. Like, it, it's it's a fait accompli at this point. But just choose a better one. Uh, there's also an interesting sort of meta element going on here where he knows in his universe that this is the Zeta Gundam. But also imagine being a kid in 1986 watching this. There is that sense of... Imagine if I could be in the actual Zeta Gundam. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ouch. Well, he is a tight. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's the oh crap, what have I done look. Exactly. Uh, and to that point, this is not the kind of emotional reaction <clears throat> we got out of Amaro Camille at these. It's always, I'm justified. Right. I'm doing what I need to do. It's not my fault. Um, judo has this very strong sense of moral righteousness of like, oh no, this this, this is beyond the pale. <laughs> this looks familiar. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> Bit of a reference back to, to Zeta. You're, you're, wouldn't that be awful? You're just like, I'm just putting together the sewage line, unclogging it. <laughs> There's a Gundam head. Just oh, All right, I'm going home. <laughs> yeah. again a little bit of levity in the midst of all of this yeah and again getting back to to bright what is his reaction to all this okay he's going to the colony do a thing like yep, yep. immediate direction commanding like <laughs> nothing phases this man anymore i do wonder the fact that he has the cockpit open on the one hand he, he said earlier i don't know how to close the cockpit um i also do wonder if this isn't a matter of he's more used to open cockpit, you know, open visibility machines. So this is right. just easier for him. And here we have arguably one of the central theses in Gundam. I have the advantage in power. How many characters are trying to achieve that? And then, and then what good is power if you can't use it well? Right. The experience, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And in fairness, you think of how often we've seen pilots killed with beam saber attacks like this. Um, it, right. It is, it is terrifying. Well, how? Yeah. Okay. So notable here that they don't kill Yazan. Uh, they could have very easily, uh, but I think that also sets the tone for the show, where we're like, where that's... We don't have to kill someone every five minutes. Gotta appreciate Bright pulling a ATAT -AT walker on Hoth. Maneuver. Yeah, I know, right? I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> Just taking that Gundam down. Battle wagon. Wow. Yeah, that is a that is a ship. Um, from back in the good old days of anime 
big spaceship design. <laughs> okay. Wow. Okay, so a lot different here. Yeah. Yeah, how would you compare this episode to uh, to earlier Gundams? Well, you know who we didn't see? Char. Oh, that's true. <clears throat> yeah. We did yeah. not see Char. Mm-hmm. And he's um, in the opening credits. Have a, so. Yep. But we didn't. But we didn't see him in, in this in this episode. Nope. Um, we, as, as has been pointed out, we we have this is literally on the heels of the last series, mm-hmm. and our protagonist Judo is a skilled pilot insofar that he has learned to do a skill. Yeah, it's not. Mm-hmm. He's he's not magical Amaro or psychopathic Camille. Yeah. He's you know just. Doing that, the thing. I'm just making money so my little sister can go to a good school. To that point, we see him outclass several times in the episode. Right. And um, we also learn that that they just they just make bad decisions. <laughs> really bad decision decision making. Mm-hmm. But it's, it, it's very interesting that our our first <clears throat> one of our first uh, uh, appearances uh, is is a Titan mm-hmm. with glorious hair. And um, <clears throat> the, to, and it's nice to know that the Titans are still thugs, mm-hmm. and that a thing happens, and but we're not told what that thing is happening. Mm-hmm. Suddenly, we we jump from this to suddenly they're helping him, and like you know, for the life of me, during the episode, I could not. I was like, what yeah. what what happened? What happened? Mm-hmm. And they don't tell you until later, much mm-hmm. much later, what what the motivation is. <clears throat> which is, you know, money. We probably should have figured, been able to figure that out. <laughs> but, you know, still, it's just kind of just kind of weird. And there was this weird little camaraderie on the highway when they were able to have a conversation between a motorbike and, and staying <laughs> on the back of a, of a uh, utility vehicle. Um, but, you know, a certain level of camaraderie, camaraderie where you're just like, oh, okay, maybe this is the new group. Mm-hmm. Not really. Not really. No. And and then we have the the really really bad hostage taking. <laughs> I just you know even you know when the hostage looks at you and just goes, "Do you want me to help you to do this?" Because that's the feeling, the vibe yeah. I was getting. I was just like, going, "All right, guys, look, this is how you're actually supposed to do it." Okay. Look. Or or she's probably just so just like I, you know I just went through a space battle. You know I had to deal with this. Camille is, you know fizzled out somehow and mm-hmm. you want to kidnap me fine can you just do it right please <laughs> please and i had no idea that that was the correct way of eating an orange I, yeah, I, apparently <laughs> no. so many 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 different things yeah yeah definitely um i do appreciate the tonal difference here uh tomino mm-hmm. did say uh, when he was making Zeta Gun- Devil Zeta Gundam, that uh, he he recognized that Mecha Anime had gotten too dark, and it was time for someone to make uh, Mecha Light again. And it's like, I wonder who's responsible for that. Uh, yeah, thank you for that two by four for several several years to my face <laughs> about telling me how war is bad. You were you were responsible for that, Tomino. Right. Was I? Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, much. Um. So I do like the, there can be stakes clearly in this show. Uh, there can mm-hmm. be we, we we saw somebody die like that. These things happen, um, but we can have some levity along with it. We can have some some goofiness sprinkled in. And I don't think uh, there's a lot of people apparently um, really dislike Double Zeta for being kind of the the goofy Gundam, for being the mm. comedy Gundam. And for me, I don't I don't get that sense. It's certainly more lighthearted in tone, especially in this first episode than previous Gundam series. Sure. But I think it works for me. Yeah. Well, I mean, to the point of there's only so much of that you can do before you have to have, like, something that is not war. Because this was not war. True. This was, you know, this was a guy, you know, about a guy who was, thinking about carrying on the war maybe i don't know or but he wanted the gundam mm-hmm. for various reasons but the rest of it everyone's just like 
we're not here to wage war. We're, we're not here to join a faction. We're not here mm-hmm. to do any of this stuff. Most of these characters are just like, I just need to make some money. Yep. Mm-hmm. And that's it. Mm-hmm. And that's it. There's so we're so we're not getting slapped with that two by four, thankfully. And they're they're trying to make money because they live in a slum. <laughs> yes, like like there's a legitimate reason why they want to make this money. It's not like, oh, I need my fourth trip to Europa, right? You know, it's <laughs> it's like, no, I I live in squalor and I don't like it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you yeah. know, I want to elevate myself out of this. Mm-hmm. I, I do have to say, I think it's the first time we've seen, and you pointed this out, but it's the first time we've seen economic disparity um, kind of featured yeah. strongly in a Gundam series. And you know it exists. It's just not something that we really explore much. Uh, we see it some in original Gundam with uh, some of the towns on Earth that yeah. are clearly not doing well. Um, but it's not like featured as a motivation for characters significantly. Um, even in original Gundam with the, uh, the red-haired spy girl where she's trying to... Yeah. Like, care for her siblings um, you know, she's living in this you know, house on the side of a hill like you know they're not living in a slum somewhere in the middle of the city um, so interesting to see that pulled back in but yeah Double Zeta Gundam off to a notable um, uh, approach in this, yes. in, in this episode so interesting to see where it goes 